Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have two positive numbers, alpha and beta. We define the function f of alpha as the limit as beta tends to zero from above of the function minus log beta minus integral x from zero to one, one over x to the one over alpha plus beta to the one over alpha all to the power alpha. What is f of alpha? And what is the limit of minus log minus f of alpha over alpha squared as alpha tends to zero from above? Let's start with this function here, which depends on the two variables alpha and beta. We can write minus log beta as alpha integral y from beta to the power 1 over alpha to 1 of 1 over y. The antiderivative is log y. Log 1 is 0. So this integral times alpha is minus alpha log beta to the power 1 over alpha, which is minus log beta. Let's split this integral into an integral from 0 to beta and another one from beta to 1. In this integral, x is greater than beta. Take x to the 1 over alpha as a common factor. The integrand is x to the minus 1, 1 plus beta over x to the 1 over alpha, all to the power minus alpha. In this integral, we have x less than beta. We take beta to the 1 over alpha as a common factor. We end up with integral x from 0 to beta, beta to the minus 1, then this bracket to the minus alpha. Inside the bracket, we have 1 plus x over beta to the power 1 over alpha. Let's do the change of variables. z equal to x over beta to the 1 over alpha. So x over beta is equal to z to the power alpha. x is beta z to the alpha. dx is alpha beta z to the alpha minus 1 dz beta times beta to the minus 1 is 1. When x is 0, z is 0. When x is beta, z is 1. We have integral z from 0 to 1 of alpha. 1 plus z to the power minus alpha. z to the alpha minus 1. Here is the integral after replacing z by y. In this integral here, we use the substitution y equal to beta over x to the power 1 over alpha. So beta over x is equal to y to the power alpha. x is equal to beta times y to the minus alpha. dx is minus alpha beta y to the minus alpha minus 1 dy. When x is equal to beta, y is equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to beta to the power 1 over alpha. We can use this minus sign here to have our integral from beta to the 1 over alpha to 1. We have cancellations. These two integrals can be combined into this one. The value with beta only appears here as the lower limit of integration. As beta tends to zero from above, this integral becomes from zero to one. The function f of alpha given by this limit is equal to alpha times this integral. If in this integral we do the change of variables z equal to one over y, we get the exact same integrand, but now the limits of integration are from one to infinity. Integrating this function from zero to one gives the same result as integrating from 1 to infinity. This implies that this integral from 0 to 1 is 1 half the integral of the same function of y, y from 0 to infinity. Let's do the change of variables, w equal to y plus 1. Each y is replaced by w minus 1. w is from 1 to infinity. Let's do another change of variables, u equal to 1 over w. We get back the original limits of integration from 0 to 1. This integral here is 1 half integral u from 0 to 1, 1 minus u to the alpha minus 1 minus u to the alpha over u times 1 minus u. In the numerator, add and subtract u. The numerator is u minus u to the power alpha plus 1 minus u minus 1 minus u to the power alpha. We can split this integral into the sum of two integrals. In one of them, we have u minus u to the power alpha. In the other, we have these two terms. In this second integral, replace u by 1 minus u. We get the exact same integrand like here. This means that this integral, which is f of alpha divided by alpha, is equal to the integral u from 0 to 1, u minus u to the alpha over u times 1 minus u. The next step is to rewrite this function of u, u minus u to the alpha over u, as minus log u integral z from 1 to alpha, u to the z minus 1. Our integral is equal to this double integral. But finally, we can do this double integral in any order. So let's integrate first with respect to u, then with respect to z. u is from 0 to 1. So 1 over 1 minus u is summation over non-negative integer g of u to the g. If we integrate term by term, we get minus integral u from 0 to 1, u to the g plus z minus 1 log u. We can use this result here. Because log u is raised to the power 1, in the numerator, we have minus 1 times gamma of 2 which is 1. In the denominator, we have the square of this exponent plus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1, that's 1. 
the integrand as a function of z is sum g from 0 to infinity, 1 over g plus z squared. And this is the tri gamma function, the first derivative of the di gamma function. This integral, which is f of alpha over alpha, is equal to di gamma of alpha minus di gamma of 1. Di gamma of 1 is minus a small gamma, the Euler Mascaroni constant. We need now to compute the limit as alpha tends to 0 from above of minus log minus f of alpha divided by alpha squared. We need bounds in order to evaluate this limit using the squeeze theorem. Specifically, if eta is between 0 and the square root of 6 over pi, and this means that eta squared pi squared over 6 is between 0 and 1, we have these inequalities. 1 minus eta squared is less than or equal to 1. 1 minus eta times 1 plus eta is less than or equal to 1. So 1 minus eta is less than or equal to 1 over 1 plus eta. Eta is positive. Eta cubed is greater than or equal to 0. Add 1 to both sides. Eta cubed plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1. Factor the left-hand side. Eta cubed plus 1 is eta plus 1 times eta squared minus eta plus 1. So eta squared minus eta plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over 1 plus eta. Consider the function x minus 1 minus log x. Its first derivative with respect to x is 1 minus 1 over x. The first derivative is 0 when x is equal to 1. If x is between 0 and 1, the first derivative is negative. The first derivative is strictly positive if x is strictly greater than 1. This function, which tends to plus infinity as x tends to 0 from above, is strictly decreasing on the interval from 0 to 1. It reaches the minimum at x equal to 1, and then it strictly increases. When x is equal to 1, the function is equal to 0. So for positive x, x minus 1 minus log x is greater than or equal to 0. Log x is less than or equal to x minus 1. Equality if and only if x is equal to 1. If we use eta, we have log eta less than or equal to eta minus 1. Replacing eta on both sides by 1 minus eta, which is a positive real number, we get that log 1 minus eta is less than or equal to minus eta. This inequality here. If we go back to this inequality and replace eta by 1 over eta, we get that log 1 over eta is less than or equal to 1 over eta minus 1. So minus log eta is less than or equal to 1 over eta minus 1. Multiplying both sides of this inequality by minus 1, we get that log eta is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over eta. Replace eta on both sides by 1 minus eta. We get that log 1 minus eta is greater than or equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus eta. This is 1 minus eta downstairs. Upstairs, we have 1 minus eta minus 1. That's minus eta. These are the bounds that we use to evaluate this limit here. Di gamma of alpha is minus a small gamma plus summation g from 0 to infinity, 1 over g plus 1 minus 1 over g plus alpha. Di gamma of 1 is minus a small gamma. When g is equal to 0, this is 1 minus 1 over alpha. We can write g plus alpha as g times 1 plus alpha over g. This function, which is minus f of alpha, is equal to 1 minus alpha plus alpha times summation over positive integer g of 1 over g times 1 plus alpha over g minus 1 over g plus 1. We now apply these two inequalities with eta replaced by alpha over g. We have 1 over 1 plus alpha over g is greater than or equal to 1 minus alpha over g and is less than or equal to 1 minus alpha over g plus alpha squared over g squared. Multiply all sides by 1 over g. g is a positive integer. Subtract 1 over g plus 1. Sum over g from 1 to infinity. Multiply by alpha and add 1 minus alpha. We get the function minus f of alpha lower bounded by this function of alpha and upper bounded by that one. In the lower and upper bounds, we have the summation g from 1 to alpha, 1 over g minus 1 over g plus 1. So this is limit k tends to infinity, summation g from 1 to k, 1 over g minus 1 over g plus 1. This is a telescopic sum equal to 1 minus 1 over k plus 1. This tends to 1 as k tends to infinity. Also, in the lower and upper bounds, we get minus alpha squared, Summation over positive integer g of 1 over g squared, that's zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. We have an extra term in the upper bound, which is alpha cubed. Summation g from 1 to infinity, 1 over g cubed, that's alpha cubed times zeta of 3. We are interested in the limit of minus the logarithm of this function divided by alpha squared. If we apply the logarithm to the upper bound and divide by alpha squared, we can make use of the inequality that log 1 minus eta is less than or equal to minus eta. So this logarithm is upper bounded by minus this bracket. When we divide by alpha squared, we get minus pi squared over 6 plus alpha zeta of 3. If we apply the logarithm to the lower bound and divide by alpha squared, 
this logarithm here is lower bounded by minus alpha squared pi squared over 6 over this bracket. When we divide by alpha squared, we get minus pi squared over 6, 1 over 1 minus alpha squared pi squared over 6. The logarithm of this function of alpha divided by alpha squared lives between these two bounds, multiplying all sides by minus 1, we get that minus log minus f of alpha over alpha squared is upper bounded by pi squared over 6, 1 over 1 minus alpha squared times pi squared over 6. As alpha tends to 0 from above, the limit is pi squared over 6. The lower bound on this function of alpha is pi squared over 6 minus alpha times zeta of 3. The lower bound also tends to pi squared over 6 when alpha approaches 0 from above. By the squeeze theorem, the limit of interest is pi squared over 6.